When it comes to animation on a mainstream theatrical level, a few studios come to mind. Pixar, Disney, DreamWorks, Illumination, Sony. But there's one company that finds itself as the odd one out, Blue Sky Studios. Despite being a competitor on the theatrical scene since the early 2000s, Blue Sky has had a difficult time finding a foothold in the industry. They were able to find initial success with Ice Age and have fallen back on it as their main franchise. But unfortunately for them, the years haven't been too kind to it from a critical point of view. Ew! Yuck! Ew! I mean, my goodness. Outside of Ice Age, Blue Sky Studios is also responsible for a handful of other films. Rio, Horton Hears a Who, and the Peanuts movie, to name a few but none of them have been as big as Ice Age. There is no doubt that this franchise is their backbone, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Despite being on the scene for years, Blue Sky hasn't been able to make much of an impact on mainstream audiences. They're more of an afterthought with their films and don't nearly get as much attention as the other studios. Yes, they have the means to release theatrical films across the world, but very few of them have been able to make a lasting impression on people. Their films show up, they usually do okay, and then they typically fade into obscurity. So what's the problem here? Why doesn't Blue Sky have an identity outside of the Ice Age franchise? And why can't they achieve the same popularity as Disney or Pixar or DreamWorks? Why are they the outcast when it comes to animated features? Well, there are a few reasons why. So, let's take a closer look and find out what's ruining Blue Sky Studios. The history of Blue Sky isn't as well known as Disney or Pixar, nor is it talked about as much. Again, Blue Sky is kind of the odd one out when it comes to the big animation studios of the industry. That being said, we'll try to cover what we can. First off, there are three main directors at Blue Sky. Steve Martino, Carlos Saldana, and Chris Wedge. These fellows are the main people responsible for directing the majority of Blue Sky's films. Chris Wedge is actually one of the founders of the studio, along with a handful of others. He got his start in the movie industry back in the early 80s and was employed at Maggie. They were sort of the East Coast equivalent to Pixar. Chris used his animation and film background and helped to create the first CGI advertising for IBM. Being part of Maggie, Chris was involved in the first half of the original Tron in 1982. Actually, this was the first computer animation that John Lasseter, one of the founding members of Pixar, had ever seen. In 1983, Lasseter would contract Chris and his fellow workers to help make a movie version of Where the Wild Things Are. This was pretty ambitious because it combined 2D with 3D animation. Unfortunately for them, it never went anywhere outside of some test animations. In the mid-1980s, Maggie was sold to Vidmax, but Blue Sky Studios would be formed in its wake. In February of 1987, Blue Sky was officially founded, but it would take another two years for them to find a client, due to the stock market crash of 1987. In the early 90s, they would create CGI animated commercials for Chock Full of Nuts, General Motors, Chrysler, U.S. Marines, and the first CGI animated M&M's commercial. Yes! Oh, then I'm really glad you came by. Why is that? Because I'm all out. Which one of you is Peanut? Ah, uh, he is. In 1996, Blue Sky would animate The Cockroaches and the movie Joe's Apartment, which, by the way, still holds up to this very day. Throughout the 90s, they would do commercial work for more companies. Bell Atlantic, Ray Novak, Gillette, and Braun to name a few. They also had a majority stake of them purchased by 20th Century Fox's VFX company called VIFX. There, they would work on visual effects for movies such as Alien Resurrection, Mouse Hunt, Star Trek Insurrection, and Fight Club. During the 90s, Chris Wedge would be working on an animated short called Bunny to demonstrate the program's CGI studio. Having been a thesis director for Carlos Saldana, he showed him the storyboards, and Carlos helped a lot on Bunny. Soon after, he became an employee at Blue Sky. Bunny would eventually come out in 1998, 
and won the Oscar for Best Animated Short Film. The success of the short would actually inspire Blue Sky to pursue making their own animated feature films. Around that time, Fox decided to sell VIFX, and were close to selling Blue Sky as well. But Blue Sky was able to change their minds after presenting the script for Ice Age. Now, this was a critical, intense production. Fox had very little faith in it, and many of the executives who worked there thought that they should just sell the film. But Chris and his team had faith in their movie. Now, there is a rumor that Don Bluth was presented the script for Ice Age and was asked to direct it, but that he passed on the film. Around that time, Don was working for Fox Animation, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. But there aren't any concrete sources to prove otherwise. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Who can say? Isn't there anyone who cares about Sid the Sloth? That being said, they did bring on some other writers to help with the movie. Some of those writers even had previous experience on The Simpsons. Again, Fox did not have faith in this film. Heck, they were going through their own issues with Fox Animation Studios. Ice Age launched production days after Fox Animation was shut down. So I can understand why they had little faith. Fortunately for Blue Sky and Fox, Ice Age was a commercial and critical hit. It even got an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature. And as we all know, it became a massive franchise and helped to officially establish Blue Sky as an animation studio. It should also be said that Blue Sky has been nominated for two other Best Animated Shorts, Gone Nutty and No Time for Nuts. In 2002, Chris Melodondry, who would later go on to run Illumination, but was working at Blue Sky at the time, said, The success of Ice Age is something that gives us additional momentum. It's too early to say, but it's certainly something we'll explore. And, whoa well, boy, did they explore it. But where are those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely? Lucky there's a family guy. And he's coming up next. In 2003, Blue Sky signed a multi-year contract with Fox to produce more animated films, including an Ice Age sequel, which they started developing in 2002, despite not having a deal yet. By the way, I'll double back on the individual movies from Blue Sky later on in this video. Just know that Robots, the second movie made by Blue Sky, came out in 2005, and the Ice Age sequel came out in 2006. But in 2005, Blue Sky reached out to Audrey Geisel and tried to get the rights to Horton Hears a Who. Steve Martino, the director of Robots, and scene director Jimmy Hayward presented a model of Horton and some animation tests to Audrey, and she liked them. Thanks to that, Blue Sky sealed the deal. They were even given access to the Geisel archives, including original artwork and correspondence with Chuck Jones. In 2009, Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs was released and became the highest grossing Blue Sky movie, making nearly $900 million at the box office. It was also the second highest grossing animated movie ever at that time, though it's been bumped down since then. In 2011, there was Rio. Funny enough, it started development back in 1995 and was originally going to be about a penguin washing up in Rio. But after Happy Feet and Surf's Up, they completely overhauled their idea and made a different movie. A movie that was successful. In 2012, there was Ice Age Continental Drift. Like before, it was a massive success at the box office, but it was becoming clear that Ice Age was losing its edge from a critical point of view. In 2013, there was Epic. This film was adapted from a book by William Joyce called The Leafmen and the Brave Good Bugs. According to sources, Fox almost got rid of Epic, but Chris Wedge was very passionate about the project. He even took the idea to Pixar and shared it with Lasseter. Turns out that Pixar tried to acquire the rights to the movie, but Fox changed their mind. Now they wanted to make it, but they wanted a different name for the movie, which is why they called it Epic. Boom! Right here. In April of 2014, Rio got a sequel and made over half a billion dollars at the box office. It was the first non-Ice Age sequel produced by the studio, but they haven't touched the property on a theatrical level since then. 
The next movie from Blue Sky would be The Peanuts Movie in November of 2015. So back in 2006, Craig Schultz, the son of the creator of Peanuts, Charles Schultz, came up with an idea for a Peanuts movie and showed it to his son, Brian Schultz. They then pitched the idea to studios, but wanted to make sure that they had full creative control under the Schultz family. Because of the faithfulness Steve Martino showed to the Geisel family when he made Horton Hears a Who, Blue Sky was able to get the film right to the Peanuts movie. The film was very good from a quality point of view, but only performed modestly at the box office. In July of 2016, there was Ice Age Collision Course. This movie only made half of what it earned last time, but also received abysmal scores from critics. Basically, it was a disappointment. And at the time of this video, the last featured film by Blue Sky was Ferdinand in December of 2017. Despite not being a massive hit critically or financially, the movie got an Oscar nomination. This was the only other time Blue Sky was ever considered for an Oscar outside of the first Ice Age. The next film to be released by Blue Sky is Spies in Disguise. This will also be the first movie released by Blue Sky after being purchased by Disney due to the Fox acquisition in 2019. Also, this is the directorial debuts of Troy Quan, Quan, I'm so sorry, Troy Quan and Nick Bruno. So this might mix things up. We'll have to see what happens next. But overall, that's Blue Sky's history up to this point. But hey, at least we got Will Smith, bird. Hey Lance, look at me. Look at you? I can see my butt and your face at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick rundown of all of Blue Sky's filmography. I'll do a short overview on each movie and share my overall thoughts about it. First, there's Ice Age. It came out in March of 2002, and it did great both financially and critically. To me, I thought it was good. Sid's a bit much at times, but overall, the setting, characters, and story are fun. I'm just surprised the series never went back to the kid. You'd think after five movies, they would have done that. But nope. Y you know what I'm saying, buddy? Next, there's Robots in 2005. The film did well at the box office, and with critics too. Personally, I like half of this movie. The half with the fun characters, the interesting setting, and the narrative of constantly having to upgrade yourself, or society will deem you as obsolete. I like those parts. Get it? Parts? Okay, I'm sorry. These are your 12-year-old parts. They're hand-me-downs. But the dated pop music and references and the fart jokes? Yeah, didn't care for that stuff. Robots has a lot to offer. But there's enough wrong with the film to cause problems for it. But hey, at least the setting makes much more sense than the Cars universe. Next, there's Ice Age The Meltdown. Released in March of 2006, the sequel was even bigger than the original Ice Age in the box office. It drilled more into the past of Manny the Mammoth and how he bumps into a girl mammoth named Ellie. We then follow their adventure and see how their relationship grows. Sid's there too. I thought the movie was okay. Not as good as the first, but not terrible by any means. Seemed to follow a logical path and how the story addresses Manny being the last mammoth. Ah! Ah! <laughs> then there's Dr. Seuss's Horton Hears a Who in March of 2008. This film was able to be faithful to the original story while also having fun with it and fleshing out the story in organic ways. Critics liked it, and so did I. So, Jojo, what's, uh, what's shaking? What's happening? What's the word? After that, there's Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs in July of 2009. I prefer this movie over Meltdown, but not by much. I thought it was neat seeing dinosaurs mixed up in a world with prehistoric mammals. Like I said earlier, this movie killed it at the box office and made nearly $900 million. At the time, that was insane. Hell, that's still insane. But the movie solidified Ice Age as the premier franchise for Blue Sky. But what about critics, though? Were you killed? Sadly, yes. But I lived. <sighs> oh. Then there was Rio in April of 2011. I like this movie. A lot. I really like it. 
I thought it had a lot of heart. It's about a macaw named Blue and how he's the last of his breed. Through his misadventures, he runs into another macaw from his species and falls in love with her. And how they can save their species. Hey, wait a second. You've all done this before! This looks strangely familiar. Because we've been here before. Real talk though, this film was fun. It's very pretty. And it was refreshing to see a story take place in South America. We don't get that too often in animation. Also, it did well at the box office and with critics too. And apparently, the story was based on a real life species of McCall. <coughs> oh no, that sucks. Speaking of extinction, oh, that was a low blow. The next movie is Ice Age Continental Drift, released in July of 2013. What happened here? Because the story went off in a very weird direction. Pirates? Uh, okay. Despite performing worse with critics, the film almost made as much money at the box office as before, making it clear to the world that Ice Age is a powerhouse franchise for Blue Sky and Fox. Oh, my whole familia. Then there was Epic in May of 2013. Like I said before, this movie was based on a book, though it did not use the book's title. I actually missed this movie when it came out and only watched it recently. The setting was interesting, with fairy people and how this one human girl gets caught up in their world. Actually, it reminds me a lot of Thumbelina. The film did okay critically and financially. Once more, that seems to be the calling card of Blue Sky Studios, outside of their Ice Age films and Rio. Speaking of which, Rio 2. Released in April of 2014, this was the first non-Ice Age sequel released by Blue Sky, and it did great at the box office. Unfortunately, and I apologize for this, but I wasn't able to watch this movie in time before making this video. From what I can tell though, critics weren't too happy with it, as it did much worse in ratings compared to the first movie. We'll show our blue friends some love. Some poisonous love. Then there's the best movie of all from Blue Sky, The Peanuts Movie. Released in November of 2015, this movie did not do so well financially, but critics loved it. And so did I. This is one of the best movies out there when it comes to staying faithful to the original property. A big part of that though is due to the arrangement Blue Sky had with the Schultz family. This film is one of the best examples out there. When it comes to a stylized adaptation of an old property, they truly did it justice. And I really wish it would have done better at the box office. It'd be great to see more content like this. Ah, oh, stupid kite-eating tree. After Peanuts, there's Ice Age Collision Course. <laughs> this film made half of its earnings from last time and it did awful with critics. Yeah, maybe it's time to rethink this franchise. And finally, there's Ferdinand in December of 2017. Like Epic, this too was based on a book, except this time we got John C. I, I know, I'm sorry, it's an old meme. It's, it's not even that funny. Okay, whatever. The story itself is quite wholesome and is about a big bull who has a sweet soul, one who doesn't want to fight, but is being forced to. Personally, I thought the movie was, you guessed it, thought it was okay. Visuals were fine, and so were the characters and story. Critics thought it was solid too, but it only performed modestly at the box office. A little something for me to you. So ends the run of Blue Sky Movies under the ownership of 20th Century Fox. Now they have a new master, one who could be their savior or their total downfall. <laughs> so what's ruining Blue Sky Studios? Well, I have a few personal opinions of what's hurting the studio. Number one, they're inconsistent. Blue Sky is all over the place with their films. It's like they had a weird arrangement with the executives from Fox. Make us an Ice Age movie every so often, and then you all can do whatever you want. You want to do a movie about some talking bull voiced by John Cena? Sure, but you gotta make us an Ice Age movie. 
You want to do a stylized version of Charlie Brown? Okay, that's fine, but you gotta make us an Ice Age movie. It's cool that they had the freedom to try out a variety of stuff, but outside of Rio, none of them really made much of an impact. Personally, I love the Peanuts movie, and most of their non-Ice Age films aren't that bad. But I feel like they missed their chance to seize their moment, to make something incredible that could have made them stand out from the rest of the competition and make them more than just that one Ice Age studio. But sadly, that never happened. I saved you, little buddy. Number two, a lack of identity. Like I said, many people know Blue Sky Studios for their Ice Age films, and that's really about it. The majority of their other films aren't that well known when it comes to most mainstream viewers. During Thanksgiving, I actually ran down the list of Blue Sky movies with my family, and the only movies they knew were Rio and Ice Age, and that was it. Everything else they couldn't remember, even though I recall watching some of those movies with them back in the day. I'll say it again, Blue Sky had multiple chances to make an impression on audiences with their studio. Everybody knows Disney for their classic films, Pixar for their original content and quality, DreamWorks for ogres and dragons and pandas, and even Illumination has notoriety with their talking dogs, singing animals, and their tidal waves of minions. But for Blue Sky, it's just Ice Age, and that's it. Outside of that, they really haven't made much of an impression on people, and it keeps forcing them to fall back on their bread and butter. Which, mind you, isn't doing as well as it once was. If you weren't smart enough to plan ahead, then doom on you! Doom on you! Doom on you! Doom Get away from me! You. And finally, number three, a lack of leadership and vision. Once more, and this is just my personal opinion, so take that for what it's worth. But I believe that Blue Sky doesn't have the right people in charge there. They don't have visionary writers or directors who can take the helm and really do something amazing or make an impact on audiences. Pixar and DreamWorks and hell, even Illumination have people working on films that can at least make a lasting impression on their audiences. But for Blue Sky, it's just not there. It's only Ice Age, and once more, that's going downhill fast. And since Ice Age is starting to decline, Blue Sky doesn't really have much to fall back on. And that's due to a lack of people there who can't make things happen. Again, I loved the Peanuts movie. That was quality. But it wasn't what Blue Sky needed to put them back on the map. And the rest of their non-Ice Age films haven't done the trick either. At the end of the day, Blue Sky is an average studio with average leadership making average movies. And if they want to be successful, then that is not enough. Overall, Blue Sky is missing a certain something to make them outstanding. Ice Age makes a ton of money, but each sequel just gets worse from a critical point of view. Peanuts was a quality movie, but it did not do good enough at the box office. Now, I realize that the artists and animators who work at Blue Sky are very talented, but they need better direction and ideas to work with. And guess what? We might get that. In March of 2019, Disney bought Fox, and with that acquisition came Blue Sky as well. That's right, folks. Disney owns three animation studios. That is insane. More. Putting the Disney Monopoly stuff to the side. I see this change as a good thing. When Pixar was bought by Disney, they were able to use the leadership at Pixar to help change the course for Disney Animation Studios. Change that has proven to be very positive and successful for the most part. And it looks like Disney is using the same approach with Blue Sky. Andrew Milstein of Disney Animation Studios and Jim Morris of Pixar will be taking supervising roles with Blue Sky, while leaving Robert Baird as the co-president of the company. It seems that Disney wants to lend their experience and ideas from their other studios over to Blue Sky and try to help them out. At the time of the release of this video, the newest Blue Sky movie is Spies in Disguise, and Disney actually gave it a decent release date so it might perform well. Outside of that though, 
It remains to be seen what will happen with the blue sky under Disney's command. Will this be the end of the Ice Age franchise? Or are they going to bring it to Disney Plus? Cause at the moment, none of their films are there. Will Disney be overly controlling of the studio? Or will they help just enough so that Blue Sky can actually release some worthwhile films? Who can say? Only time will tell.